Hey guys, Norm over here, and uh, for another Vintage Guitar Minute on the All Guitar Network. And uh, All Guitar Network has a lot of really cool stuff on it, so I hope you guys are paying attention and telling your friends. Um, this is another one of my 58 uh, Precision Bass. Um, this one has a raised pole piece, um, anodized pick guard, maple neck, um, alder body, a little bit of wear, but really nice, very minimal neck wear. It's got flat wounds on it. Just really a great bass here. And, um, you know, when it comes to P basses, I've never played any of these maple neck P basses that have had a bad neck. These things are like rock solid. Uh, you can see the truss rod is still all the way down at the bottom, which I always love to see. Um, it's got the finger rest over here. Um, just one of the cooler bases ever. It's got the original tweed case, which I love. And uh, a lot of these cases didn't make it. It's got the covers in there. And so, all you bass player guys, uh, this is, to me, in terms of P bases, this is really just about as good as it gets. So, I hope you guys enjoy it. And we'll show you some other stuff. Okay, so this next guitar is a Gibson Barney Kessel. And it's a 64 um, transitional. It still, it has now the chrome parts rather than the nickel parts, which is unusual for this year. Um, but these guitars, um, this is a spruce top one. This is a Barney Kessel Custom. Uh, a lot of the uh, Barney Kessels have the maple top, and uh, it's just a really beautiful guitar. Got the wide, flat neck at the nut here. Um, again, spruce top, the cherry sunburst finish, double cutaway, so you can kind of get all the way up on the neck. Um, just very, very cool. Elongated headstock. The headstock is like about the size of a Super 400 headstock. It's just unusual to this guitar, but um, I guess Barney wanted a guitar that he could kind of get way up high on the neck. And uh, I think these are sleepers. These are still undervalued guitars. These are in beautiful shape. Got the stinger on the back of the headstock. This was a factory second. So I'll show you, there's a little two right up here. And what that means is there was a flaw in the finish. And at the factory, the choice was, do we completely strip the guitar and refinish it? Or do we discount it 10% to the dealer who's buying it? Um, and just say that, you know, if there was anything structurally wrong, they destroy the instrument. But, you know, rather than strip it all back down, it's probably more cost effective for them to just discount it by 10%. And, uh, you know, and let the dealer um, take care of it, either make the difference or whatever. And it was generally something very small. I don't know if I can spot where it was. But it, it's just something, there's also a little hole here. I don't know whether it was something else on there at one time. Not another guard, but I'm not sure what it was. Um, and uh, it's an orange label. And it's a, a five digit serial number, 70,000. And just a very cool guitar, the Clusens, double, uh, double ring, and the double line Clusens here. And the original hard shell case, the black case with the gold or orange interior. And just a very cool guitar. Um, I think these guitars are undervalued. And I think that uh, anybody who's looking to buy something, you know, for investment sake down the road, this would be a great guitar to have. Okay, guys, so this is a uh, Gibson ES-225, uh, sharp cutaway, two P90s. Um, it had the original uh, trap, uh, the um, trapeze tailpiece, but the one that had the wrap over on this. And the story with this guitar is, um, I had it, it was fully original. But uh, Bob Dylan's manager called me, Jeff and uh, and Bob, and he said, you know, uh, you know, I'd like to play like one of those single cutaway uh, Gibson guitars, thin body, you know, with the two pickups, with the sharp cutaway tobacco sunburst. Well, I mean, if it's with thin body, it can only be one thing, and that's an ES-225. They did a 125, but they were generally a lighter sunburst. 
and um, later on they did the uh, darker sunburst on that but he said he wanted 50 so anyhow so what we did was we actually took that other tailpiece off put a short trapeze on it and a two pneumatic bridge and Bob used it one night and he used it now I'm not representing it as Bob's guitar but um, we loaned it to Bob Dylan and it was played at the Capitol Theater in Port Chester, New York on June 14th, 2017. What makes this guitar very unusual is that Bob had not played guitar on stage in several years prior to this gig. He's mostly playing piano now, and Bob has mainly been seen playing piano on gigs in recent years. Bob played guitar on the second song of the show, To Ramona, and it's authenticated by Jeff Kramer, OK Management. And uh, uh, the, the story was, at the end, Bob wanted to buy the guitar for me, but uh, I started thinking, I'm going, I don't want to sell this guitar. This is a Bob Dylan played guitar. It was not owned by Bob, but Bob did play the guitar, and there is a history with Bob on it, and uh, just it's just a very cool thing. So uh, I decided to keep it, and I, don't, I haven't showed it to many people, but it is a Bob Dylan played guitar, and we kind of did the customization on the guitar because Bob wanted it, he said, but I want it to play in tune and I don't like that, um, you know, the trapeze or the wrap over uh, bridge kind of gets in my way. So I said, Bob, we'll take care of it. We'll make it play the way you want it. And it'll be the good guitar for you to use on that tune to Ramona. So cool piece of memorabilia, even though Bob never owned it, but he did play. It. So this guitar is a Prairie State guitar, which is made by the Larson Brothers. Larson Brothers made Prairie State, they made Euphanon, they made Stahl, uh, they made uh, guitars, Maurer, and under a couple other different names, depending on who they were contracted to make the guitars for. They were one of the first companies, or possibly the first company, to make actually really big body uh, flat top guitars. Um, they made guitars that were about the size of a J200 uh, before Gibson made a J200 or SJ200. But what's kind of cool about this guitar, this is an F-hole guitar constructed kind of like an arch top, but this is a flat top. And uh, it's got mother of pearl all the way around it. This is not the original tailpiece or bridge, uh, but it's an ebony fingerboard, just a really cool maple guitar made in the late 30s. Um, just something really odd because it's the construction is really arch top construction, but it's a flat top. Had a few repairs, but great guitar. It's got the bound F holes, um, block inlays, beautiful inlay up at the headstock. Um, so um, there are people that know what the Prairie State guitars are, and they're highly collectible and highly desired. So I just wanted to show you this because this is definitely an odd. So this next guitar is a guitar I pulled out of my warehouse. This is a stunningly near mint L5C uh, from 1967. Um, what happened is on some of these guitars, they did uh, like some lacquer over the pick guards and they would get like this kind of disease on the pick guard. Uh, so they kind of would uh, oxidize. But when you look at this guitar, this thing is as sanitary as you'd want to see. Um, just really beautiful example. Again, it's got the black stinger going back here. Really pretty maple in the back. Um, just a guitar that's in remarkable condition other than the pick guard. And that's something that happens to some of these over the years. This is the original hang tag that goes with it. And that's the original case and somebody's going to get a, a wonderful guitar. It really plays and sounds great, and it's in beautiful condition. So, uh, and I love blonde guitars, and this is a beautiful blonde that's turned a little amber and uh, doesn't get much nicer than this for this age. Is This is not the original case, but this is a Hofner Beetle bass. But this is a very early one, 64. It's got the staple pickups, and when I refer to that, I mean by these little staples here. Um, it's got like the perloid pick guard, perloid control cavity and all that. Ebony bridge with uh, these little, it, it looks like almost like a piece of a fret that they use to uh, do the intonation. This one's just a very, very comfortable bass. This is, I believe this is the same year as Paul's or one of Paul's that he was most famous for playing. The individual tuners, um, 
This this base, uh, we actually rewound both these pickups. They were working, but they were a little bit light, and I thought the base was too cool to not have it put out full power. Um, and we, so we did it. We did a good job. So the thing that's kind of cool about these, they're lightweight feel great something you can hold on to all night long and not have a bad back um, and paul made them sound great and really uh i think some of my favorite beetle tunes was when he was using a hoffner and not when he went to the rickenbacker he did some cool stuff with the rickenbacker as well but this is pretty cool uh pretty cool example of a, of a hoffner beetle bass so if you're a Beetle Bass fan, this is probably one that you'd want to have because the year is just right. It also has the Reese logo here. If you notice, uh, if you look at a bunch of Hoffners, some of them have the logo just kind of um, inlaid into the face. This is a raised logo. So just a very cool instrument. And if you love early Beetle stuff, this would be a great bass to have. And it sounds terrific too. The pickups sound fantastic. Um, we just wanted to make sure that, you know, it was too nice of a bass to have it not be performing at 100%. So we reround them. I mean, it's something that probably nobody would even know, but we like to tell people everything we know about this stuff. So this next guitar is a beautiful guitar. It's got some wear, but honest wear. This is a 1955 Stratocaster, ash body. Um, it's got the round string retainer, obviously maple neck. This is a hardtail which means it has no tremolo. So when you look at it from the back, the guitars, are, the strings are shot through the body like a Telecaster. These guitars stay in tune really well. Um, they're a little lighter weight because they don't have all the springs going through them. Four digit serial number. Um, this one's on consignment by a good buddy of mine. And uh, just a great sounding, great playing guitar and somebody who wants a hardtail Strat. Um, I know Joe Bonamassa loves hardtails because actually they stay in tune better there's no unnecessary weight and if you're not using the vibrato why have it so i just think it's just something really cool and it's a little more unusual in the hardtail or the non-tremolo and as you can see there's no lip here that would have the uh, tremolo arm and all that so just a very cool guitar and uh, thank you for watching and we'll be getting to you with some more stuff at the all guitar network Thank you very much.